Devlog 0.5. This is a devlog. Deadline met. Alright, welcome to this month's devlog. Moving forward, I will not be subtitling these things because it takes a long time and it seems the auto-generated subtitles are good enough. Originally, this month was going to be devlog 1, where I went public with my game and revealed title art, the world map, various branding, a full list of features and content, including what has and has not been completed, and a detailed roadmap of how I've gotten where I am and how I will proceed. Turns out I misjudged how long all of that would take, so I'm delaying the big reveal a month and likely splitting the rest over the following months. It's going to be spectacular, especially since I'll finally be able to call it by name instead of referring to it as my game. It was actually a fairly difficult decision to delay, but after my third all-nighter in a week, I realized it was the right call, lest I turn out subpar work for the sake of meeting a deadline. For six years now, deadlines have sort of been a polite suggestion. If I misjudged by a few days or weeks, it made no real difference, since the only person who would ask what was taking so long was my wife. Last month, I declared to the world, I'm making a game and will release devlogs on the first of each month until it is finished. Without having honestly thought out a plan for the logs themselves. So, I figured, rather than give an apology and set a precedent for failure and false promises, I would make good on my declaration and offer this up as a learning experience to future devs and devloggers while also covering progress I've been making. So, let's begin by establishing an explicit understanding of why these devlogs started. It's quite simple, really, and if you watch the entirety of Devlog Zero, you may already know what I'm about to say. I was in a bit of a panic due to the Steam release of Brigandine Legend of Renercia. Catastrophizing. Self-doubt. Desperation. I thought I had to solicit public support to keep myself motivated, and not give up on everything. Turns out, it was all completely unwarranted. Not because Renercia is bad, mind you. Just because Renercia has given anyone who just wanted another brigandine with a new story more or less what they asked for. That means I'm not making my game for them anymore. You see... While developing several of my game systems, I had included the ability to completely turn them off to more closely resemble Brigandine, and had, as of yet, no clue how I was going to balance any content that interacted with those new systems. The most clear example of this is the Resolve, Morale, or whatever I end up actually calling it, and the fact that a lot of classes had abilities that interacted with this resource. With that system optional, again, to more closely resemble a traditional Brigandine gameplay loop, I would have either had to disable some classes, or somehow change abilities that reference that resource to instead reference health or whatever, then essentially have to balance two sets of skills for any class that dealt with the system. Now, I can just remove the option to turn it off and balance everything once. Amazing. Ah, but I got off on a tangent there. What I was trying to say is that I probably wouldn't have even made any public mention of my game, if not for the anxiety and emotional suffering my brain was causing itself. As such, I didn't actually have any idea what these devlogs were going to be, other than an attempt to gather some external motivation and, hopefully, a chance to talk about my game a bit. That said, I'm very grateful for the anxiety I felt, because I had continued to delay the thought of going public with my game development for a variety of reasons over the last few years, and would likely have fallen into the trap of not trying to draw any attention until it was completely finished. Nobody can support a game they don't know exists from a developer they've never heard of. Speaking of a chance to talk about my game, I spent around 40 hours this month live-streaming my first experience with Brigandine, Legend of Renercia and gave a lot of little teasers about my game while also familiarizing people who aren't sure what Brigandine even is with some basic concepts that are at the core of the gameplay experience. Feel free to check out the VODs if that interests you, or if you're just curious what it sounds like when I'm low on sleep and high on caffeine. Best way to spend vacation days. Absolute 10 out of 10. 
Also, yes, that counted as working on my game. So does the time spent on these devlogs. Game development is a lot more than just making a game, and with an advertising budget of zero dollars, I'm going to have to dedicate a lot of time to publicity, especially shortly before, during, and after release, whenever that eventually is. So, another thing that helped me convince myself to start sleeping again and just release this instead of the overly ambitious Devlog 1 was a simple question from my therapist. What is a Devlog anyway? Well, most people seem to treat them as a sort of progress report from what I've seen in the past. Hi there, this is what I've done since the last Devlog, and this is what I'm currently working on. Yeah, I don't think I'm really going to do that. I already know there are many, many months of 3D modeling ahead of me, and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be happy with a minute-long video saying, here's the model I'm still working on after this month's worth of effort. So, instead, I'm going to focus on the development process, the emotional and mental aspects of things, discussing the design and decisions that have gone into the game, and hopefully offering some entertaining anecdotes along the way. I want my devlogs to be more than just keeping tabs on the checklist as I continue development. For example, this month, all I've managed to do for actual development is put more work in on the map. I'm now punching over the 300 hour mark, but it's almost finished. That alone wouldn't be much of a devlog. So over the next several months, I will be sharing the art assets as they are developed, as well as information about the different systems. The idea is that I'll run out of things to cover around the same point that the art assets are all done, and I can get back to programming, implementation, and content development. The nice thing about this definition of the devlogs is that I can freely rant about any part of development I feel like each month, easing the burden these devlogs put on me. So, huzzah! I'll definitely be keeping everyone up to date as more progress is made and possibly stream some development in the future. But for now, make sure you check back next month, or, you know, consider subscribing, for the game reveal that will hopefully establish enough copyright that I don't have to worry about changing the game's name. Again, for the fourth time. Okay, okay, to be fair, the first name was Untitled, so I guess more like third time. Yeah. Turns out coming up with a unique name for a game that hasn't already been used is pretty hard. But for now... That concludes this month's devlog, so until next time, have a good one.